Come on, let the people of God say amen. amen. Come on and say amen again. If you believe that victory belongs to Jesus right there in your house, why don't you just clap your hands and just thank God that victory belongs to him. I know it looks difficult. I know that our present situation and circumstance does not uh, look victorious, but that does not change the fact that the victory belongs to him. I wish I had somebody. I wish I could see you this morning so I can encourage you to tell you that to hold on because victory belongs to Jesus. Would you just help me right quick and just touch that person sitting next to you in your living room or in your bedroom or wherever you might be viewing this from and just touch them and tell them victory belongs to Jesus. Oh, come on and try it one more time. Tell them victory belongs to Jesus. Amen, amen, and amen. Well, happy Resurrection Day to you. We are indeed delighted to have this opportunity to come back and to share with you on another Lord's Day. The Bible declares that this is the day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. Well, we bring you greetings right here from the campus of the Connecting Fellowship Church. We are meeting this morning in our children's wing, and we're thankful to God that we are able to have this opportunity to come back to you one more time. Lady Sherry didn't kick us out the house. We're grateful to God for that. She did not do that. She did not do that. It was uh, just a joint decision of us to, to relocate here because we needed more space so we could move around, but we thank God. We thank God. We thank God. We thank God for the ability to be able to bring uh, this message and this worship, uh, this worship to you. I'm not going to hold you long because I know that you've got some things that you need to do today that's on your agenda. Perhaps you're trying to go somewhere. Look at your neighbor and say, keep yourself at the house. You might want to just stay in, stay in. This is the time to stay in. This is not the moment and the time to go out. Uh, but I want to encourage you to grab your Bibles real quickly. I want you to turn to a very familiar passage of Scripture. You've heard it. Um, a number of times, but I want to lift it up. I want to lift it up again for your hearing. Matthew, the gospel according to St. Matthew, uh, number 28. And uh, I want to read for your hearing, uh, begin at verse 1. And I want to read down to verse number 6. And when you get there, just type in, amen. Just type right there in the chat room, amen. Matthew chapter number 28. Verses number one through six. Reading this morning from the New International Version of the Scriptures, you will find these words. After the Sabbath, at dawn on the first day of the week, Mary Magdalene and the other Mary went to look at the tomb. There was a violent earthquake, for an angel of the Lord came down from heaven. And going to the tomb, rolled back the stone and sat on it. Did you get that? That was a violent earthquake, verse 2 says. And for an angel of the Lord came down from heaven. And going to the tomb, he rolled back the stone and sat on it. The Bible declares, verse 3, that his appearance was like lightning. And his clothes were white as snow. And the guards were so afraid of him, they were so afraid of him that they shook and became like dead men. Yeah, yeah. Verse 5, this is why I want to hang my hat. Verse 5 and 6, the Bible says that the angel said to the woman, uh, to the women, do not be afraid, for I know that you are looking for Jesus who was crucified. Right. Yeah, yeah. Boy, y'all missed that already. And this is, I told you this is Resurrection Sunday. The, the angel said to the women, Don't, do not be afraid, for I know that you are looking for Jesus <laughs> who was crucified. He is not here. He has risen, just as he said. Come and see the place where he lay. Would you just help me to preach this this morning and just go ahead and testify and say hope in the midst of uncertainty. That's what I want to tag this text this morning. Hope in the midst of uncertainty. 
you, you just have to admit that we're living what appears to be in some hopeless times. You don't have to be a rocket scientist to realize that uh, life right now as we know it is a bit uncertain. Uh, you don't know what you're going to do on tomorrow. Life is uncertain. You don't know where you're going to go on tomorrow. Why? Because life as we know it is uncertain. What we do know is that the children will be at home from school. What we do know is that there are some workers uh, who used to have a job. What we do know is that there are some people who are going to have to work from home. There are some people who are looking and trying to apply for unemployment. There are some people who are waiting on the government's check to come in. All we do know is that life as we know it is a bit uncertain. Somebody's wondering how they're going to make ends meet. Somebody's wondering how they're going to put food on the table. Somebody is wondering about how they're going to pay this much rent or pay this much mortgage. Somebody's wondering how they're going to pay the card note. I'm trying to tell you this morning that life as we know it is a bit uncertain. But the question is, can you and I find and discover hope in the midst of uncertainty. Why? Because on March the 4th, this virus called COVID-19 came into our great state of Texas and it turned our state, it turned our city, it is turning our communities upside down. Can I get a witness here? Employers, furloughed workers, schools sent children home indefinitely, houses of worship have closed their doors and small businesses, businesses are struggling to stay open. Life has been tough these past few weeks. Can I get a witness? On the horizon, there is joblessness. There are buildings, yes, that have been burned. There are political conflicts. There are sickness and death all around us. And if you're not careful, my brothers and sisters, it's easy to get discouraged. It's easy to become frightened. But when we take an earnest look at what's happening around us, we have to testify that life as we have known it has drastically changed. I wish I had somebody who would testify this morning. Life, life is different for us. Life has changed for us. We, we are now operating and living in what some call a new normal. And then I text my brothers and sisters, we are encountered with the journey of two women uh, that Matthew describes uh, as Mary uh, Magdalene and the other Mary. They have been given an assignment to go and uh, to, 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 to the tomb of where Jesus was buried. And they have been informed, uh, they're thinking in their own minds that how are we going to get in to fulfill our assignment? They're wondering about who's going to roll the stone away. And I want you to know that sometimes in the midst of uncertainty, hope confronts, that's the first thing I want to tell you, that hope confronts our perceptions. I said hope confronts our perceptions. You, you got to feel this text. They, they are trying to figure out how they are going to get in and anoint the body of Jesus. Why? Because there is a stone that's blocking their entrance. There's a huge stone that's blocking their way. And here it is, these two Marys and, and uh, some of the other gospel writers suggest that there were some other women who were alongside them and they are talking amongst themselves, trying to figure, figure it out. But can I just testify here this morning that sometimes when you and I are trying to figure out stuff, we discover that God has already worked it out. I said he's already worked it out. What you need to do is learn how to keep walking. You got to learn how to keep walking. And here it is, these sisters are walking to the tomb that ah, oh, where Jesus laid. And the book declares that when they get there, <laughs> what uh, the obstacle that they thought was in their way had been moved. The Bible says that the stone had been rolled away. Sometimes my brothers and sisters, hope has to come and confront our perceptions. 
When they get on the scene, what I want you to notice something here. The Bible says that when they get on the scene, ah, there is an angel on sight. <laughs> God sent one of his emissaries. Sent one of his messengers to move some stuff out the way. But not only did he send them, him to move some stuff out the way, he also sent them with a message uh, uh, as they proceed on their way. <laughs> are y'all hear? Are y'all listening to me? He gives them a message and listen to the message. The, 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 the angel says, uh, Mary, Mary, that's what he says, Mary. Uh, he is not here. Y'all missed that? Oh, I tell you, I told you that that hope comes to, to challenge us. Why? Because hope here uh, confronts their perception. Hope's assignment is to confront what they see. Hope is here to challenge and contend with what they have heard. And hope's mission is to contradict what they know to be a reality. My brothers and sisters, these, 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 these ladies knew that on Friday, Jesus was crucified. They, these two Marys in our text, they saw Jesus walk down the Via Della Rosa. They, they saw him on his way, uh, on the sorrowful way towards the cross. They heard with their own ears uh, the conversation between him and the thieves on the cross. They saw with their own eyes soldiers nail his hands. They saw soldiers nail his feet. They heard him tell the thief on the cross, this day you shall be with me in paradise. They heard him say, I thirst. They heard him say and cry out, it is finished. They saw Jesus drop his head in the locks of his shoulders and die. Can I get a witness here today? My grandfather used to say, he died. Didn't he die? The reality they faced was a dead Jesus. On Friday, he died. And, and when Jesus died, their hopes died. When Jesus died, they, they could not comprehend his words, it is finished. They, they didn't understand what that truly meant. They, they didn't understand that our sin debt had been paid. They didn't understand that when he said it is finished, that he, uh, his atonement for our uh, sacrifice of sins had been fully paid. They didn't understand the words. They didn't understand the words. And so because they didn't understand, their hope had crumbled. And somebody watching me this morning knows what it means to have your hopes dashed. Somebody looking at me on this resurrection morning started out hopeful in 2020. Some of you declared, some of you posted on your Instagram, some of you tweeted, some of you posted on your Facebook personal and professional resolutions. Uh, you, you, you sounded like the songwriter who said, it's a new day. It's a new season. It's a new day. A fresh anointing is flowing my way. It's a season of power and prosperity. It's a new season. You, you, you started off hopeful. You started out hoping that 2020 was going to be your year. You started out saying that this is the year, this is the time where my circumstances and my situations is going to change. But I've stopped by this morning to encourage somebody. Uh, it's easy to be hopeful when everything's going well. It's easy to hope when you got a job to go to on Monday. It's easy to be hopeful when there's money in your bank account. It's easy to hope when all of your bills are paid. It's easy to hope when you got gas in your gas tank. It's easy to rely on God when your relationships are rich and rewarding. But is there anybody who knows that circumstances and situations will change? Can I preach this thing this morning? That, that, that journey started out hopeful. It was a joyful time being with Jesus when he was healing the sick and raising the dead. It was a hopeful time seeing Jesus take two fish and five loaves and feed a multitude. It was a hopeful time seeing Jesus uh, 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 come down and uh, uh, tell the storms to cease and the waves to lay down. But I come by this morning to ask you, can you still have hope when life alters your expectations? 
Can you still have hope when suffering and struggle finds your address? The Bible declares that these women journeyed towards his tomb in sorrow, expecting to find a dead Jesus. The Bible declares that it was the first day of the week. It was not a Monday. Like some calendars mark the first day of the week. No, no, it was a Sunday morning according to the Hebrew calendar. And when these ladies were heading to that place where Jesus' body lay, can't you hear them talking as they're walking? How are we going to get in? But I told you that while they were trying to figure it out, God had already worked it out. Isn't that good news? I said, isn't that good news? Why? Because hope comes to confront <laughs> our perceptions. The angel tells them he is not here. That, that, I'm, I'm so happy. I said, I'm happy that he did not stop his message right there because then they still would have been filled, here it is, with doubt. I want you to know that there's something attractive about hope because here's the second thing not only does hope confront our perceptions, but hope also celebrates our present. I said it celebrates our present. Can't you see it in the text? The, the angel says, wait a minute now. He is not here. Here it is. He has risen. <laughs> That's present tense. He says he, 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 has, he has risen. And there's something attractive about hope. My brothers and sisters, hope helps us to celebrate the present no matter what it looks like. Some wise person said that we can live about 40 days without food. They said we can live three days without water and we can live eight minutes without air, but we cannot live a single second without hope. I said hope is powerful. Hope is not only powerful, but it is attractive. My professor, the late Dr. Howard Hendricks, used to share this with me. He used to give us a gripping definition of discouragement. He said, discouragement is the anesthetic that the devil uses on a person just before he reaches in and calls out his, hope, his heart. Wow. Can I say it one more time? He said, discouragement is the anesthetic that the devil uses on a person just before he reaches in and calls out his heart heart. And my brothers and sisters, that's what discouragement seeks to do. It wants to carve out our heart. It wants to make us unhealthy. Discouragement, my brothers and sisters, is spiritually and psychologically and emotionally and relationally debilitating. Because when people lose hope, they lose their ability to go forward. Pain becomes paralyzing. Sorrow makes you surrender. Fear replaces faith. Anxiety replaces prayer. Despair overtakes joy. Y'all not feeling me like I need you to. In insecurity replaces confidence. Despair overtakes joy. You don't hear me. I said when couples lose hope, they, they, they give up on their marriages. Parents give up on teens. Leaders give up on the people. Employers follow and fire their employees. Healthy emotions like contentment and peace are replaced with the toxic emotions of confusion and worry and disappointment. Yeah, yeah. Ah, Y'all don't feel me like I need to, but, but hope comes to help us remain helpful in the present. The angel said, he is, <laughs> he's not here. And I'm glad that his message didn't stop there. He says to us, and he says to these ladies, he has risen. Somebody should have shouted right there. I said somebody should have shouted. Somebody should have took out running in the living room. Somebody should have jumped out of the bed, started clapping their hands and waving their hands. I said, I said he has risen. Somebody should have shouted so loud until the neighbors had to come outside and investigate and say, what's going on? I said, he has risen. Oh, y'all missed that. I, I got to say it one more time for myself because it gives me great strength to say that, to know and to understand that he has risen. Yeah. That, that he is, here it is, the, he is not dead. Yeah. He is not still dead. Right. He is not laying in some borrowed tomb. But, but, but as the angels declared, he has risen. Yeah. He got up. Uh, can I tell you why these words excite me? 
These words excite me because they are a declaration of victory. Somebody holler victory. It, they are a declaration of victory. In other words, he says he's not dead. He, he is alive. And, and that ought to be good news for somebody. That ought to be news that's worth celebrating. That ought to be news that's worth shouting about because hope brings us the news of victory even when we are uncertain. He has risen. And he gives us ah, news of victory. Throughout the ages, men and women have yearned and prayed for victory. Victory over various circumstances. Victory over struggling and distressing situations. Victory over sin. And everybody periodically stands, here it is, in the need of victory. I'm talking to somebody this morning. I'm talking to somebody who's, who's struggling, uh, who's presently in a financial crisis. I'm talking to the person struggling with a wayward child. I'm talking to a teenager or a young adult who's going in the wrong directions. I'm talking to the one who's right now breathing on a ventilator. And I've been sent to your via technology to give you a great gift. <laughs> Here's the gift, my brothers and sisters. I stopped by to remind you this morning that he is risen. That the greatest gift that we can give is hope. Can I get one witness here? I said the greatest gift that we can give is hope. The greatest gift that a leader can give to their people during this time is hope. The greatest gift that a parent can give to their children is hope. The greatest gift that a teacher can impart to their students is hope. The greatest gift that a coach can give to his athletes is hope. The greatest gift, my brothers and sisters, that you can give to your family is hope. The greatest gift that you can give to your friends is hope. The greatest gift that you can give to your neighbors is hope. The greatest gift that you can give to your co-workers is hope. Because hope makes the difference. Hope, yeah, is the difference maker. I said hope. We need hope. And he says to them, ah, he is not dead. <laughs> He is not here. He has risen. Just as you said. Yeah, yeah. I, got to give, I got to give you one more here so you can go ahead and, and finish your groceries off your, 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 your Easter Sunday lunch. But here it is. Not only does hope confront our perceptions, but hope celebrates our present, but it also confirms his proclamations. <laughs> Can't you hear the words of the angel? He is not here. He has risen. Here it is. Just as he said. Oh, my brothers and sisters, that's why you need to get in this book. That's, that's why you need to get into God's word because the more that you and I read and navigate and study and meditate on God's word, the more hope we get. <laughs> oh, the Bible says weeping man do it for a night. But joy comes in the morning. Somebody hand me that towel over there. I said, weeping may endure for a night, but joy comes in the morning. You ought to get in the word because God's word gives us, come on, throw it to me, gives us hope. Somebody holler hope. God's word gives us hope. It gives us hope in the midst of our, our dire circumstances. God's word gives us hope. That's why you ought to read the word when it says, I lift up my eyes unto the hills. From whence cometh my help. My, my help comes from the Lord. You ought to get in the word because his word, oh my goodness, gives us hope. The angel comes. The angel comes and he confirms his proclamations. He confirms his proclamations. I said he confirms his proclamations. Can I just walk you through? So you see, because Jesus' resurrection was not something that was happenstance. Jesus had already said that he was going to get up. Uh, can't, can't, can't you hear him when he was talking to those Jews and these Jews asked him and said, what sign do you show us since you do these things? Jesus answered and said to them, if you destroy this temple in three days, <laughs> he said, I'll raise it up. Can, can I keep pressing the point? He, he, in that occasion, uh, uh, the Bible says that 
uh, an evil and adulterous generation craves for a sign. And yet no sign shall be given to it except the sign of Jonah the prophet. For just as Jonah was three days and three nights in the belly of the sea monster, so shall the Son of Man be three days and three nights in the heart of the earth. Y'all not feeling me yet. The Bible says that therefore my father loves me because, here it is, I lay down my life and that I may take it up again. No one takes it from me, but I lay it down of myself. I have, here it is, I love it, authority to lay it down. But I also got the authority to take it up again. Jesus' words confirm his own resurrection. The angel says to these ladies, he says, not only will hope confront your perception and not only will hope help you to celebrate your presence, but hope will help you confirm what Jesus has said. It'll help you confirm it. Would you just look at your neighbor and say, neighbor, get in God's word. You, you need to get in his word you, because the more you get in his word, it makes you hopeful. I was playing. You know, we ain't got nothing to do now. So the other day at the Hubbard house, we were playing Uno. And uh, I want y'all to know that uh, whenever I sit down for anything, it's about to, be, it's about to get serious. And so uh, myself and the wife and, and baby girl of Brooklyn, we sat, sat down to play a, a little friendly game of Uno. I said a friendly game. And, uh, and they got serious with it. I mean, you know, I, ain't, I can't tell you everything that happened because I got to go home, y'all. But uh, uh, there are some people who got some unsavory ways when it comes to playing some games. I wish I had a witness here. But, uh, uh, but I discovered some things that as we were playing the game, that when you play Uno, there are some cards that's in the game, that's embedded in the game, that can work to your advantage. <laughs> There's a card in there called the skip card. That is, when you, when you want to get over somebody, when you want to deny somebody some stuff, uh, you, you can skip over them. You can play the skip card, and it will, it will skip them, but, but it also works against you. Somebody can skip you. I discovered there's also another card called the reverse card, and all the reverse card it does is it sends the game in the opposite direction. Y'all not going to feel me like I need you to. There's another card in there called a wild card. And, and all the wild card does is allows you to change the color of your situation. But you do know that if somebody else got a wild card, what you just changed, they can re-change. Oh, y'all not going to say amen. But, but I discovered that there's another card that's greater than the skip card, a card that's greater than the reverse card, a card that's greater than the wild card, and it's called that wild draw forward. <laughs> that wild draw forward would change the, the, the determination of the game, the wild, well, y'all not going to help me right quick. The wild draw forward will alter the whole situation, the wild card will cause you to, 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 to go from a loser to a winner. Yeah. Can I get a witness here? And so here it is in the Hubbard house. Somebody thought they were going to win the game. And uh, I discovered that some people don't play fair. I said, can I get a witness here? I said, some folk don't play fair. I discovered that there are some people who God gave me. That uh, they, uh, they do, they interpret, they insert uh, a, a privilege in it called renege. In other words, they got a card that they can play. But because they recognize that the card that they have might put them at a disadvantage, they keep drawing. <laughs> oh, y'all like it. Because, see, I don't know what they have in their hand. I just assume that they've got a card that they can play with. But, but they keep pulling until they uh, throw down the draw for so that they can change the landscape of the game. And uh, that's what God did on Calvary. <laughs> when, 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 when. It, it, it didn't look good on Friday. I said it didn't look good on Friday. The wild card, Satan had played the wild card and he thought he had it. And, uh, oh, yeah, don't help me. Watch out now. You, you watch out. I'm about to go somewhere. And he, he thought he had him. And what he did was uh, he, he, put, he, he allowed them to put a stone because they wanted to block him in. 
they, 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 he died. He did die, I tell you, right? The Bible declares that he did die until, until they put him in the tomb. And Satan thought he had him, and so he, he, he played a skip card. And he, he thought he was going to be able to skip over it. And so here it is, Friday. He skipped over Friday. Then he turned around and he skipped over Saturday. But is there anybody here who knows that Sunday is coming? Oh, I, got, I feel my help coming. I said Sunday is on the way. The Bible declares that when Sunday came, Jesus got up with all power in his hand. He played the wild, draw four card. He, he changed, he altered the landscape of the entire situation. He, what he did was he paid in one smooth move our sin debt. Can I get one witness? <laughs> what he did was he said, uh, I've got all power in my hand. Not only that, but he confirms his proclamation. Not only that, but in one smooth move, he calls us, here it is, into partnership with himself. And what he did is he says, I want you to go to my brethren. I want you to run to him quickly. I want you to go and tell my disciples uh, that he has risen. Yes, from the dead. And not only that, but he's going ahead of you into Galilee. And there you will see him. He says, now I have told you. And I stopped by this morning on this Resurrection Sunday to tell you, you ought to go and run and tell somebody about the good news of our Lord. He is, you ought to holler, uh, he is not dead, but he has risen. Can I just go ahead and tell you my, 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 my Easter story? Some years ago, uh, back there at the... Oh, uh, Royal Terrace Church over there uh, on the northeast side of the city. When I was a little boy, the first words I shared with the congregation was five little words. <laughs> can, I can, I can I tell the story? <laughs> I, I studied those words. I practiced those words. I rehearsed those words. I even got dressed up to share those words. They were important words. They were inspirational words. They were exciting words. They, here it is, were hopeful words. I, I stood on the stage of the Rod Terrace Missionary Baptist Church where Reverend Stroman Herbert was the pastor. I looked the people in the eyes, straightened up my back, raised my head, and raised my voice with my black suit on, and I said, he lives. <laughs> Happy Easter, everybody. That was my whole speech. I said, he lives. <laughs> Happy Easter, everybody. And that's my words to you this morning. He lives. <laughs> Happy Easter, everybody. He lives. Can I get a witness? That's why the songwriter said, I serve a risen Savior. He is in the world today. I know that he is living. Whatever men may say, I see his hand of mercy. I hear his voice of cheer, and just the time I need him, he's always near. Somebody holler, he lives, he lives, Christ Jesus lives today. He walks with me, and he talks with me along life's narrow way. Somebody ought to holler, he lives, I said he lives. Go ahead and touch your neighbor and say he lives. And so whenever you know that he lives, uh, that's what hope does. Hope will confront our perceptions. Hope will celebrate our present. Hope will confirm his proclamation. But then hope will call us into partnership. So you ought to make up in your mind this week that you don't tell somebody about the goodness of Jesus. Somebody ought to holler, won't he make a way for you? Won't he open doors? Won't he dispel COVID-19? Won't he heal your body? Won't he put money in your pocket? Won't he pay your bills? he give you hope in the midst of uncertainty. Say yeah, yeah, yeah. I know he's all right. I said, I know he's all right. <laughs> my God, my God. I said, I know he's all right. He lives. He lives. He lives. You ought to walk out of here telling somebody that he is not here. 
he has risen. Just like he said. Happy Easter, everybody. May the Lord bless you real good.